Hey there! It's time now to see the last component of the audio generator, the heterodyne mixer. We will go through the details of the schematic and the assembly of the experimental circuit on a breadboard, and finally we will see how the whole audio generator behaves. Before diving into the details, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell to receive notifications when new videos come out on this channel. The subscription will also help a lot in making the channel grow and serve you better. Let's begin. The signal from the pitch reference oscillator comes in from capacitor C21 attached to the base of transistor Q1, where it is also attached to capacitor C22. From C22, the signal from the pitch variable oscillator comes in also into Q1. Transistor Q1 is polarized to the resistors R15, R16, R17 and the twin port R18, which needs to be tuned so that the voltage of the collector of the transistor is zero when there is no signal applied to the base. The transistor is used to combine the signals coming from the pitch oscillators. Because of the non-linear characteristic of the base emitter junction, the two signals are actually multiplied with each other. When we multiply two periodic signals together, we end up with a resulting signal which has all the frequencies of the original signals, plus the sum of the frequencies and the difference of the frequencies. This is what is called the heterodyne process. This output signal is available at the collector of transistor Q1. To better understand this concept, let's take a look at the signals themselves. Here is the signal coming from the pitch reference oscillator, here is the signal coming from the pitch variable oscillator, and here is the resulting signal at the collector of Q1. If you look at this output signal, you will see that it resembles an amplitude modulated radio signal. The carrier is basically the signal from the pitch reference oscillator, and the modulating signal is the one which is the difference of the two frequencies between the reference and the variable oscillators. Because of that, it is really easy to extract the low frequency signal by using a diode, like it is done in AM radio receivers. However, we cannot pass the signals from the collector of Q1 directly to the diode, because this signal is too low with respect to the minimum voltage required by the diode to conduct current. To resolve this problem, I put in between the diode and the transistor in op-amp configured as a voltage amplifier. The input R20 is tuned so that the amplification of the signal is enough to have an output signal that onset the diode. This way we end up with a signal at pin 6 of the op-amp that has the same shape of the one on pin 3 but with a greater amplitude. This signal is therefore capable of traversing the diode on the positive part of the whole wave. And there, there is a low-pass filter made of R19 and C23 that takes care of shunting the high frequency of the carrier toward ground, leaving only the modulation signal that now goes to the capacitor C24 which removes the DC component. And so, finally, at the end of this stage, we have a relative clean audio signal which can produce the sound of the theremin. Let's now take a look at the heterodyne mixer assembled on the breadboard. We have the transistor Q1 over here, which is connected right here. And the transistor is attached to potentiometer R18 and then to resistors R17, R15 and R16. If you take a look here, the here are the three resistors and the twin pot. And then there are the two capacitors over here that are basically the two capacitors that are used to input the signal into the base of the transistor. As you can see, one capacitor takes the signal directly from the pitch reference oscillator, while the other capacitor takes the input from the pitch variable oscillator. Then there are the user capacitors to filter the power supply, and those are this one, 17 and C19. After that, the signal goes out from the collector and goes to the op-amp U6. So from the collector the signal is taken with this cable and goes directly over here to pin 3 of the op-amp. The op-amp is connected to the pin 7 to the positive of the power supply and through pin 4 to the negative of the power supply. And here there are the C20 and C18 capacitor users to filter as usual the signal from the power supply. So here are the two capacitors. One is over here and the other one is here behind the yellow cable, you can see it. And then the power supply goes through pin 4 over here, which is the white one that goes here, which is connected to the negative of the power supply. And then the other side is connected to pin 7, which is 
the red cable over here that goes up to here which is the positive for the power supply and finally there is the train port R20 which is connected between pin 6 and pin 2 and the other end is connected to ground here is the train port this is the one that is used to fine tune the amplification of this stage in fact it goes from pin 6 back to pin 2 now we have uh, the output of the signal over here which is taken on pin 6 through this cable and goes directly to the anode of the diode D1 which is a 1N4148 right here on the other side of the diode there is this resistor and this capacitor you can see over here which are basically R19 and R23 which constitute the low pass filter to clean up the high frequency from the signal that goes through the diode and finally there is a C24 which is right here which takes the signal from the diode and brings it to the output where it goes later Later on to the power amplifier we have over here so this is all for the circuit let's see what else is around here you see I am using the power supply that I built specifically for the theremin which is connected to the breadboard over here and so we have the ground with the white cable and then we have the negative with the green cable and the positive with the red cable and then here we have an amplifier which is the one that will be used by the theremin itself which is powered directly by the power supply there through the red cable here that goes positive down there and then um, through the blue cable which is the negative that goes over there and finally the input of the amplifier which is behind here which is this connector here and the other one here on the back this yellow cable goes directly here to the output of the circuit and the green one goes instead over there to ground so this is the whole circuit let's now work on it and let's see how it behaves okay i have powered up uh, the circuit as you can see and i have connected the oscilloscope to the output of the pitch reference oscillator exactly to the point where it connects to the capacitor that goes to the input of the transistor on its base so it's this one this capacitor here that goes over there the oscilloscope is connected over there let's take a look at the signal how does it look like on the oscilloscope you can see it's kind of a sine wave right now we have a frequency of 205 0.8 kilohertz for it now let's move the oscilloscope to the other capacitor which is the one where there is the signal coming from the pitch variable oscillator and uh, here is the signal on the oscilloscope as you can see it's a little smaller as an amplitude and this is done on purpose because we want the pitch reference oscillator acting as a carrier of the signal and this one it will be the signal that does amplitude modulation on the pitch reference oscillator signal so so let me increase the amplitude just a little bit you can see the frequency is a little lower here 205.3 instead of 0.8 like the other one so there is a difference between the two signals which is the one that will be converted in an actual audio signal pretty soon and actually now let's take a look at the signal coming out of the collector so let me disconnect the oscilloscope from there let me put it on the output on the collector which is basically the one coming from this yellow cable so let me put it over there let's see if we can make this work Let me adjust here so we can see exactly what we want to. There. Here is the signal. Let me take a snapshot so it will be easier to see it. So as you can see, we have a signal which is a very high frequency over here, but it's modulated with a low frequency which we can see over here and this is basically the audio signal that we want to get from the diode over here so what we are seeing right now is the signal in this position this one let's now take a look at the signal in this other position over here at the output of the diode so let me move the probe of the oscilloscope and let me put it right over here which is the cathode of the diode let's take a look now with the oscilloscope again let me make it run again and probably now the signal is too strong and here it is this is basically the audio signal that we were looking for as you can see from here the frequency is low it's around 400 Hz let's put now the oscilloscope at the very end so where there is the audio output actually which is on the yellow here on the yellow cable and uh, this should be okay so the probe is now connected to the output and we can look at the oscilloscope over here let's make it work a little better let's show how it really works here it is and you can see now I'm moving my hand closer to the antenna 
you can see the frequency increasing and then far away and the frequency is reducing closer further closer further okay so this is it basically now let me do this let me move a little bit to the camera over here and let me show you what i'm doing with the antenna which is right here and let me increase the volume now of the amplifier we should be able there we go. Look at that. I can basically play something at this point. great so good at playing this instrument but of course this is because we are missing the volume control once that is ready it would be all another story we have finally reached the conclusion of the description of the audio generator it took three episodes of the series to do so but you will agree with me that they were necessary to go through all the details we also enjoyed trying to play some music as already anticipated, now that the whole audio generator has been completed on breadboard, we will use the next video on the theremin to bring everything together on the PCB and run a final tuning of the circuit in its final configuration. Then we will also enjoy some more music. I'm sure you like my performances by now. <laughs> or not. There is one more block that needs to be designed and built, and that is the volume control, which will provide dynamics to the sound and will provide a better musical experience. Once that is also done, we will put all the pieces together in an appropriate case, and so finally we will have completed the build of the new theme in version 2, but that is for a future video in the series. And you know, I become real fond of building musical instruments. If this timing really works as I expect, I will start a new series to build another kind of electronic instruments. If you have any suggestion, please share it with me in the comments. Let's see if you pick up one that, that I already have in mind or something else that you would like to see more. Thank you for watching this video until the end and please give it a thumb up which will greatly help in improving its visibility so others can enjoy it too. And finally, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so to give me a help in making more and more videos. Talking about help, a small monetary contribution would help also. There are different options that you can choose from and all are listed in the description below. See you on the next video and as usually, happy experiments!